Hello. I know that uh, you have joined with me in uh, being riveted by the television and watching um, the, all of the comings and goings from Ukraine. It's just been heartbreaking, and I know our prayers continue to go out um, to them and also to, obviously, the Ukrainian people here in the United States. We've been fortunate to partner with Slavic Evangelical Baptist Church in Vineland, and they have a mission there, the Hope for Children mission, that they have organized to try and send supplies. And we actually know that some of the work that we've done already with the supplies we sent have uh, made it there and um, are indeed helping us people. And that is our goal, is to make sure wherever there is need and we can step in and we have community engaged in that um, effort that we partner with them to make those things happen. So we will continue um, to work with them and uh, bring you updates as the process goes forward. Obviously, very little news on COVID. I'm thrilled that that is not the lead story anymore. We have had the privilege of serving 7,500 people who were hospitalized um, over these last two years. It is two years this week that marks um, the beginning, if you will, official beginning of COVID when we actually formally organized in New Jersey and began being able to identify the cases that we were seeing. Obviously, there's been so much work and dedication done by our emergency rooms, by all of our outpatient offices, as well as those in the hospital, and by all of you who have continued to support our staff um, in both uh, emotional support as well as your monetary support to help us get through those very difficult days. Um, and we will continue to stay um, engaged with this effort. We have our vaccine tent um, that it continues to be available. Our hours are more limited um, because we are focused on the homebound and um, providing other services with those staff. We anxiously await for those of you who have children um, under five, um, waiting for that information to come forward. And so we will continue to partner with you and provide you information and keep you abreast of everything that we learn as we learn it. So, you know, COVID has impacted us in many different ways. And one of those ways is impacting our sleep as we worry and be concerned about all those stresses that we, we face. This week is National Sleep Awareness Week. And what we know is that there are some very clear habits that you can get in the, um, just the consistency of doing, whether it be a set time that you go to sleep, whether it limiting your screen time, making sure you're limiting your caffeine before you go to sleep, all of those things help. And it's so important, especially for chronic illnesses, whether it's diabetes or heart, heart disease, we know that not having enough sleep impacts those in a very negative way. Um, and we know all of this and a lot more because of the technology and the expertise that has been developed over the last decades, where we now have sleep technicians, where we have sleep centers, and of course your primary care doctor is always your first source of information. So March is Social Work Month, and um, we have 45 social workers that work um, in the organization that help, whether they're in behavioral health counseling, whether they're in our care management system, any number of positions that really just help navigate when you, you need them the most in those very difficult times. So I wanna have a huge shout out to my fellow social workers and the colleagues in the community. Um, we thank you so much uh, for all you do and for all that um, you've given. And since uh, in the honor of Social Work Month, I want to tell you this great story that we got from Amber Panatucci, who is one of our recruiters within our human resources department. And Amber found um, this applicant that came to her who was internal, Betsy Morales. And Betsy had worked in our dietary department for 15 years. She accessed our tuition reimbursement program and she found ways to make sure that she could continue her education and her passion um, of social work. And, uh, and she talks about her thanks to God and all of the people that walked with her along this journey. She thanked us for making sure we had that reimbursement program that would allow her to accomplish this. And mostly you can just feel her excitement and her energy about this next chapter of her life. And that's what we really do. We provide the opportunity for you to start somewhere and hopefully spend your career um, at Inspira in many different roles if you choose to, or in the same role if your passion is there, but really creating that opportunity to constantly grow and take on new opportunities and fill that passion in your soul. And I know that Betsy is gonna do great work and I know that we're gonna to continue to support her in her journeys as we do all of our staff. So until we meet again, be well and stay safe.